title of this is Pancreatic Cancer and Diabetes, It Goes Both Ways, and Harvey alluded to the fact that uh, this can sometimes be confusing because uh, there are really two relationships between diabetes and pancreatic cancer. First is that longstanding diabetes increases the risk of developing pancreatic cancer. The second is that pancreatic cancer itself appears to be able to induce uh, diabetes, and this effect appears to be independent of islet uh, cell destruction. Those interrelationships are shown schematically uh, here in the upper panel. Number one, if you have uh, <clears throat> diabetes, uh, you have an increased risk over the long term of developing pancreatic cancer. Alternatively, in the second, pancreatic cancer appears to have the ability to, uh, to induce uh, diabetes, and we'll talk about these uh, separately. In respect to the first <clears throat> relationship, I think it's also clear that the drugs can modify the relationship uh, between diabetes and the risk of developing cancer. Uh, <clears throat> more clearly that they, certain drugs can increase the risk uh, and possibly that some of the diabetes drugs may actually decrease the risk of getting uh, uh, disease. So multiple mechanisms as outlined here may uh, contribute to the effects of diabetes on the development of pancreatic cancer. I think one of the leading ones is high insulin levels. Uh, of the effects that insulin can have, uh, it increases uh, activation of other receptors for insulin, such as insulin-like growth factor receptors that have been linked to cancer development. Obesity, which often accompanies diabetes as a cancer-promoting uh, pro-inflammatory state, Intercellular lipids probably underappreciated uh, in their role in uh, neoplasia and possibly missed for, for some time can promote uh, neoplasia and may play an important role in the, <clears throat> in the context of a risk factor for diabetes. Uh, poor glycemic control can lead to the generation of abnormal uh, glycosylation events. They, this can activate uh, certain uh, receptors and activation of these receptors have been linked to the development of pancreatic cancer. Interestingly, glucose, high levels of glucose alone can <clears throat> cause changes in uh, the behavior of cells and have them behave in a way that, that appears to predispose to cancer development and metastasis, uh, the so-called EMT or epithelial mesenchymal transition. And <clears throat> finally, uh, another effect of insulin uh, more recent, it can have an effect on pancreatic stellate cells, either it's the cells that produce fibrotic responses in the pancreas and uh, drive uh, fibrosis. So you remember from <clears throat> your medical school um, uh, anatomy classes that the pancreas has one of the three portal systems in the body and as shown here, there's a portal system that links the endocrine pancreas to the exocrine pancreas shown here on your left. And probably 50% of uh, uh, the exocrine pancreas is bathed with, uh, with very high concentrations of, <clears throat> of hormones released uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the islets. And of course, these can change as, uh, during the development of uh, diabetes, depending on the type and the point in the, uh, the time course. This is, I think, some of the most uh, fascinating data on this topic, which just emerged in the last year or two. Primarily, it's come out of uh, Mayo Clinic. This is a very nice review from a little over a year ago from Suresh Chari's group. And I just call your attention to the images on the right. These are biopathological specimens from two patients that had uh, uh, diabetes. And what you can see here, although not stained for fibrotic tissue, these these pink bands here represent fibrosis. And what they appreciated was extensive uh, fibrosis in the exocrine pancreas that had never been appreciated in patients with diabetes. Uh, <clears throat> some of the features are shown over here. This really isn't chronic uh, pancreatitis. In this particular study, it was more common with the, uh, with the type 1 diabetes, but I'll show you in a moment there's evidence that this can also occur in uh, type 2 uh, diabetes. Uh, <clealy> whether it's related to re re reduced islet cell hormones, high exogenous insulin is unknown. And <clears throat> I just ask you to think about the possibility since fibrosis appears to predispose into carcinoma in virtually any organ that it appears in, whether this could be an unrecognized risk uh, for the development of pancreatic cancer and diabetes. A more basic experimental study, uh, but with, some, with human data, 
published a couple of years ago from Dr. Pandall's group in UCLA. Uh, this is a different time of stain. Here the stain for, for fibrosis is in blue. These are normal human pancreas up here, a little bit of fibrotic tissue, dramatic increases in patients uh, with type, uh, type uh, 2 uh, diabetes, and also showing stimulation of, of uh, stellate cells uh, measured by this uh, green staining alpha smooth muscle uh, uh, <coughs> actin. So again, this had experimental evidence in it also in an animal model showing insulin alone could stimulate the proliferation of, uh, of uh, the stellate cells in fibrosis and also demonstrated in uh, human, human tissue. I mentioned that <clears throat> anti-diabetic, I mean, the drugs used for treatment of diabetes may affect the risk of disease development. Um, encouraging in that in this and other studies, metformin appears to have a potential protective effect. Uh, <clears throat> the contrary, I think a uh, number of studies suggested that insulin use uh, increases the risk of uh, developing pancreatic cancer fivefold in this particular uh, study. I should mention or make them up in, que in uh, questions. There's been, um, <clears throat> was a flurry of interest and data on GLP-1 agonists, so-called incretins in pancreatic uh, cancer. Um, I think just to summarize the wealth of data now is that most studies have not identified a relationship and the risk of present uh, decreases over, whoops, over the first year and this uh, suggests uh, to most that uh, this is probably a <clears throat> reflection that this is a pre-existent uh, tumor effect and not, not the effect of the GLP-1 agonist. So let's turn now to the other side of the equation, and that is that pancreatic cancer can induce uh, diabetes. This is one of uh, <clears throat> uh, several, several studies demonstrating that recent onset diabetes, and uh, in the case of these studies, that's defined within three years of development of pancreatic cancer, uh, is, <clears throat> is commonly, or cancer is commonly seen in disease. So the, this particular study and others similarly uh, have, com have looked at it and compared it to other types of uh, epithelial cancers as shown here in controls. And you can see that far and away um, uh, pancreatic cancer leads <clears throat> in having recent onset uh, uh, diabetes within three years of presentation of the uh, tumor. So a number of different possibilities of, as to why pancreatic cancer can cause diabetes. I, I mentioned that it's seen in, in almost uh, half of the uh, patients in, in most series. It can precede the presentation of the cancer by months to years. It can appear in small or undetectable tumors. An interesting feature that hinted that it was unusual is that it sometimes disappears after resection of the pancreatic cancer. Um, <clears throat> pancreatic cancer cells themselves uh, ha may be the source of this resistance. It's been found experimentally that they induce insulin resistance in hepatocytes, that the skeletal muscle from these patients also exhibits uh, insulin resistance. A compound has been identified, uh, a protein that's secreted by the pancreatic cancers, ad adrenomedulin, that reduces uh, insulin secretion. And it also, um, the delivery of these little vesicular packages uh, called exosomes from pancreatic cancer has been shown to affect uh, fat lipolysis and lipid metabolism, which also could be uh, contributory. I think a, an important, uh, one of the important instructive studies on this, again, from Dr. Chari's group at Mayo Clinic is shown here. And they went, they found a series, had a series of patients that developed pancreatic cancer, as shown by the arrow, and looked back at their records as to when they developed uh, diabetes uh, compared to a control group, and you can see that they started seeing these curves separate uh, uh, up to three years pr uh, before the, the uh, presentation of the diabetes. On a, a small group of these patients, they had <coughs> CT scans uh, of the abdomen that they could go back and, and look at and ask the question, when did they first see the cancer if they worked their way backwards? And uh, <coughs> regrettably, um, and this reflects on the value of this, I think, as a... Um, 
a screening test, if you will, or want uh, a test that could alert you to, to doing imaging. On average, they only could see the lesion a couple of months before it behaved, before it appeared uh, clinically, suggesting that <clears throat> the lesions during this development phase are probably there, but maybe undetectable by our standard imaging techniques. Are there other features of the cancer associated with pancreatic cancer uh, that, that separated from uh, type 2 diabetes? Another study from this group uh, showed that one difference is, as shown in the lower panel, uh, here in the upper panel you see the, the, uh, <clears throat> the glucose is rising in this uh, pancreatic cancer group, is as a, in contrast to most patients with type 2 diabetes, the BMI uh, falls and, and uh, Suresh's group is looking at various combinations of, of markers and clinical presentation to see what will give them uh, predictive uh, value. The diabetes that's associated with uh, pancreatic uh, cancer uh, <clears throat> differs, and it's given the classification of type 3C. Its uh, major criteria is that this is defined as, as diabetes that's due to exocrine pancreatic disease. You have to, by formal definition, evidence of exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, disease by pancreatic imaging, and an absence of typical diabetes uh, type 1 uh, antibodies. And minor criteria are shown here, especially this absence of uh, 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 PP uh, secretion appears to be of uh, value. <clears throat> the distribution of the uh, type 3 diabetes is uh, shown here. Most patients uh, <clears throat> have a type 2 that will encounter about 10% type 1. And we're finding out there's actually quite a few with type uh, 3 that we're missing. So probably up to 10% of the patients. The various diseases in the exocrine pancreas that can cause type 2 are shown to your right. Uh, most commonly, chronic pancreatitis, and it appears that <clears throat> pancreatic cancer forms about 10% uh, of the contribution to the type 3s. Some of the <clears throat> uh, features of the type 3 are reviewed here in comparison to type 1, 2, and 3, and I think uh, this <clears throat> abnormal uh, 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 PP response, uh, serum PP response is, um, is held to be possibly one of the better uh, discriminating uh, factors. So to summarize, uh, <clears throat> diabetes can increase the risk of pancreatic cancer. This is seen with longstanding diabetes. It's especially seen in patients that have long-term uh, insulin use. Uh, there are other factors that are associated with diabetes that also may contribute to disease, such as obesity. Uh, I think an important new observation is that, that diabetes can cause exocrine pancreatic fibrosis, not chronic pancreatitis, but fibrosis. And I think we may think of that and also maybe in the context of, of other talks in, uh, today on pancreatic imaging, uh, method, whether we should be looking uh, more closely for, for pancreatic uh, uh, fibrosis endoscopically as a predictor who's at risk for disease and that, <clears throat> that metformin may be uh, protective in this setting. Uh, <clears throat> that cancer, pancreatic cancer, can cause diabetes is su uh, suggested by the recent onset of diabetes uh, within 36 months and um, the, uh, the noting that about 40% of patients with pancreatic cancer will present uh, with, with diabetes. Uh, <clears throat> we've also observed that pancreatic reception can cause regression of diabetes and that the pancreatic cancer itself may release factors that affect insulin secretion and sensitivity. Unfortunately, uh, this information is not at this point useful as a, a screening intervention. Thank you.